Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com for life coaching and mentoring. Let's talk about turning the other cheek. That's a phrase that I have never liked. I am not going to turn the other cheek. That's been my attitude for most of my life. If you mess with me, I'm going to mess with you back a thousand times. I'm going to be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and now you're my new hobby. Uh, now I own you. You're going to be praying that you never met me. I'm going to traumatize you and ruin your life. And enjoy it. I'm going to joke about it with my friends afterwards. Turning the other cheek sounds like some kind of bitch shit. Like you're supposed to be a weakling. Like you're supposed to just let people walk all over you. And when I hear that, I'm just like, hell no. And people can say, well, it's the right way to be and morality and have a Bible in their hand and talk about heaven and hell, whatever, man. Then I guess I'll go to hell because I'm not letting anybody walk all over me. <laughs> That's been the way that I've thought most of my life. As I've gotten more into personal growth and trying to get into this idea of warriorship and what I mean by that is self-mastery. I've had to philosophize on this turn the other cheek idea. First of all, just on a very basic notion, you don't need to fight every single war. You don't need to fight every battle that comes your way. You can let some go by and just be like, eh, it's not worth it. It's not even worth it. But it still doesn't feel good to let people walk all over you, and I don't think you have to do that. And Turning the other cheek, let's get this straight. Turning the other cheek doesn't mean that you let someone stab you. <laughs> You're allowed to protect yourself. Even you heavy duty Christians that are trying to follow the rules really specifically. In the Bible, it gives you the option. It gives you that loophole where you can trade in your tunic for a sword. I think Jesus says that in one of his quotes. You can use lethal force to protect your family, to protect your wife, to protect your kids, yourself. Nothing wrong with that. That's not a sin. That's what turning the other cheek kind of sounds like, but that's not what it means. So I'm going to go over a couple points, and this is what, it, what it's about. Maybe this will help people understand it a little better, at least the way I understand it. The way I understand turning the other cheek, it's about restraint. Restraint of that inner monster. I might be able to fight every battle, and I used to. I wasted a lot of my time fighting battles, useless battles. <laughs> I'd create battles. I felt kind of like that Don Quixote character going after windmills. I was just looking for battles. Turning the other cheek, you got to understand that this isn't a stab in the gut. Turning the other cheek, is a, in the story at least, it's a slap on the face. And then instead of drawing your sword to kill him and say, how dare you, don't you know who I am? I'm the baddest dude in town. You just give him the other cheek. That's what Jesus is suggesting. That just sounds so difficult. But it's about using restraint over that inner monster. You may see people like that in movies do that. Somebody who's just super badass, big and strong, and some chump comes up and tries to hit them or slap them, and they don't even respond. They just stay kind of motionless and emotionless, I should say. Like it doesn't even affect them. That can scare the opponent off. Just your lack of emotion over an offense can scare off your opponent because it shows a certain type of strength. But it's really about self-mastery, about learning to control that inner monster. It only comes out when you let it. And it has a dial. You can turn it up or turn it down, but it's 100% under your control. No one can slap out that monster. They, all, they control you. If they can just come up in with a minor offense, like a slap, and draw out that inner monster, turn you into a psychotic nightmare where you're ready to go to prison over, over relatively nothing. They basically own you. That person is your master. This is about self-control. Warriorship is about self-control.
So we turn the other cheek to control that inner monster. And about restraint, to restrain ourselves. The next one is, you know, you want to have calculated actions. Turning the other cheek is a calculated action. And you show no emotion. You've just been offended. You show no emotion. You want to jump into action and start arguing. That may be your, your, your trigger. Someone has just offended you. Someone has just attacked you. And you're triggered to, to fight. That's the way I've been. Well, the superior man, the warrior, someone who's a true master of self, can have calculated action and that gives you the advantage especially if someone has offended you they don't really know what you're going to do and sometimes sometimes it's good to keep your plans hidden In the art of war Sun Tzu talks about that keep the enemy guessing the next one this really speaks to warriors but only a, a warrior engaged in self-mastery can understand this, that turning the other cheek means that you're seeking peace over victory. Sometimes, you know, when you talk about victory, we're talking about defeating the enemy. When you defeat the enemy, there's blood. <laughs> you, you, you just caused s some harm to somebody. When you defeat the enemy, even if it's just verbal, And sometimes we have to ha see the bigger picture. It's more important to maintain the peace than it is for me to be right. And the last one, turning the other cheek, I can relate to, some of you might not be able to, but it's, it's about ending perpetuated cycles. Turning the other cheek ends these perpetuated cycles, these cycles of generational vendettas and revenge that maybe we see with gangs. At some point, someone is going to have to say, you know what, I'm not going to seek revenge. I know it's my turn to hit that ball back, but I, I'm just going to let it bounce. And I'm not going to perpetuate this cycle of violence, this generational vendetta anymore. I've suggested that to mobsters and to gang members and they don't really get it. My father was murdered in 1991 in a gang war. I knew who the man was. I met, I've known the man. I, I knew exactly who it was. He wasn't some mystery person. It wasn't a sniper from a mile away. It was a guy I knew. I knew the guy who killed my father. And I had a knee-jerk reaction because I felt powerful and I felt capable and I, I could get this guy. I could get him. You kill my father, I could get you. And I plotted on that for a minute. Until I kind of saw the light. I have a whole story about how I snapped out of that, which I won't go into now. But I did snap out of that revenge mode. And what I was left with was a decision. Do I want to continue a war, engage in a war, possibly lose my freedom? Do I want to have blood on my hands, on my conscience, to go stand in the pearly gates when it's my turn to explain to St. Pete what I've been up to and all my sins and I have this on my hands to explain that I couldn't control myself, that I couldn't restrain myself, that I couldn't seek peace over victory, that I had to go and kill the man who killed my father. So I chose not to do it. I chose to let it go. I chose to turn the other cheek. I didn't do anything. I let the guy live. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. 
some will never get it. Thanks for watching.